Welcome to Hiking with Kathleen. Today, we're gonna to focus on the time that we're spending here at Grundy Lake Provincial Park. And uh, we're bringing you along on that journey. I hope you stay. Yeah, we're just exploring our campground right now. It's a bit overcast, so we'll hit the trails. This is only our first day. We, we set up camp yesterday. And uh, so we're gonna hit the trails, but we might wait until later this week. We're here for a week. Cause it looks like it could rain at any time. Stand on the rock. We're going to stand on the rock and have a look yeah. out on the water. We'll pull out the map and uh, indicate which lake this is. You get the full effect of bird watching out here. <laughs> I'm not watching for birds per se, but you can see the mosquitoes perhaps on my mosquito netting. So, bug nets or a win. That was a, a, I mean, bug shirts. It was a really great idea to bring these. Shannon and I have used them almost always when outside of our tent. And we use the fly swatters when we're inside the cat tent or inside uh, our trailer <laughs> because the mosquitoes just swarm right after us. But they've had a pretty wet spring, especially these last, uh, say, six nights. Um, so the humidity of the summer really encourages their population explosion. But that's okay. We adapt. There's so much beauty to see here in Grundy Lake Provincial Park. We're going to do a little tour of the area today. Shannon's brother and his family have a cottage not far from here, so we're going to go and visit and check out some more scenery in the area. Well, folks, we're off. But two nights of camping and that's enough. Well, not really. Shannon and I have been given a great invitation and we're going to be spending the night with her uh, brother's family and what we've done is we packed up the car and Shannon is going to show you what it takes to go away for one night. Might not be evident to you. We have to bring a cat. We bring a cooler. <laughs> There's also stuff in the trunk but we've got everything we think we're going to need to be away for one night. So anyway, uh, we're going to perhaps bring you with bring you with us, depending on what kinds of things we get into. But we're hoping we might do a little bit of canoeing, probably some hiking around. And they're right in this vicinity. They're about a half an hour away from Grundy Lake Provincial Park. So anyway, um, the scenery will be similar, but it gives us a chance to be in a setting where we have electricity because we're on a non-hydro site or non-electric site and uh, we're getting used to how that all works with the solar system. The problem with that is when you have rainy and cloudy days, which is what day one and day two were, 
then it makes it very difficult for us to be able to sort of top up our batteries. We have two batteries that are equipped with a solar panel on the roof and one that is outside of the, uh, you know, outside of the trailer so we can move it around, but it hasn't been very sunny. So we're hoping that we're giving it a break during two sunny days to be able to fill up the trailer battery. So we'll let you know how that goes too. Yeah, you don't have a chance to see us trying to pass another vehicle because I don't want to show other people. But yeah, it's like both cars are, or trucks are <laughs> hardly on the road when you're trying to do that.
here first thing in the morning before the motorboats start and have one of these uh, air mattresses that has its own pump. I carry this sometimes on my pack when I'm out hiking because then it keeps me off the cold or wet ground. And right now these chairs are covered with dew. So it's perfect. <laughs> I have a little headrest. And So, before the boats start, before people are out here, beautiful time to wake up and see things as they naturally sound. It's supposed to brighten up today. 15 degrees this morning, which is perfect. And then uh, it'll get to about, you know, 22, 23 degrees this afternoon. We're only staying in the morning. And we're going to take out their canoe when Shannon gets up. And we'll go for a little paddle before the boaters start going. We don't enjoy uh, going in the same waters as the motorboats because of the wake that they create. Um, and there's a lot of water skiing and tubing with Shannon's brother was, was towing his kids on a water tube yesterday. Water tube kind of looks like a living room couch. It was very comfortable. So, anyway, I'll let you just listen to the sounds. Yeah, we were striving to get out here nice and early in order to go for a paddle today. And uh, we wanted to try to <laughs> beat the boaters so that we don't have to ride in their wake. And it could be peaceful out here. So we're going to just paddle along the shoreline and maybe just see what kind of wildlife there is. We did have a chance to see some otters earlier, uh, but I didn't have my good camera with me when we were sitting down on the dock this morning having our coffee and and Shannon having her tea but uh, anyway it's a beautiful start to the day it's sunny it was cloudier earlier today but this is perfect <laughs>
We've been sort of following a great blue heron, and now we see it standing on the rocks. Uh, Shannon and I are out for a bike ride near Swan Lake, and we saw this young bear. Shannon and I are just reveling in this bear sighting. So, yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, I'll be able to get out on some trails and find other interesting things like bears, maybe moose, things like that, that inhabit Grundy Provincial Park. I know I've already seen an otter, but that was uh, nearby, I've seen beaver. So it's really cool to know the different animals that live here. And yeah, you just wanna respect their habitat and their privacy, really. You'd wanna surprise them. And so we just stayed and we watched and we left that young bear alone. So it was really cool. So what'd you think of the bear, Shannon? That was pretty cool. I was just uh, waiting for Mama to come. Fortunate. What did you have ready in case Mama came? I had the bear spray. <laughs> bear spray, just in case, because you never know, right? You just want to be prepared. And so there was no aggressiveness at all with respect to that little bear. And it might have been a yearling, so a young cub from last year. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Chalk that one up as highlight for today. So we're doing their one uh, sort of woodsy type of bicycle trail. So we're not on the road. Shannon, do you remember the name of this trail? Remember the name of this trail? Oh, uh, Pakish Wakas <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll have to get back to you on that. Anyway. So we're at Grundy Lake Provincial Park and we are experiencing one of their bike trails. So we've gone 0.5 kilometers. This is about two and a half kilometers in total. Oh good. This is like at Pinery. They're covering up known turtle nests and that protects them from their predators. That's good. Each way, baby. Oh my god. 
I was going to say, I'm glad we don't have to go back that way because there was a lot of downhill. <laughs> yeah, I guess we should have read it a little more carefully, but... <sighs> oh, there's a loon. So we're having a little break right now. We had a really interesting experience and actually more than one interesting experience because we've seen the young bear today. And we came for a break on this trail that actually is where you have to double back to get back to the, the start. So it's called Beaver Lake. And we came across a couple of loons who were engaged in the uh, mating ritual so they were um, sort of wooing each other, shall we say. And uh, we didn't really get to capture much of it, if any, um, with our cameras. But it was a really, really neat experience to see that. So today is July 3rd. And it's interesting that uh, their mating ritual is taking place at this time. But I guess it takes them time to get to their preferred nesting gr grounds. And uh, it's sitting at about 5 p.m. So anyway, this is just a, a really wonderful day. I love seeing animal behavior happening. Oh boy, the deer flies are not pretty. Okay. I'm going to have you beside me. I'm okay. Oh boy. Yeah. I, got, I got to keep going. You see some beaver lodges over there. Good morning. So, what I'm doing is I'm heading out to a trail. Uh, it's called uh, the Swan Lake Trail. And I'm hoping to get there before there's uh, too much foot traffic. And that way I'll have a chance to do some video recording, some photography, and uh, really just check out the peace and quiet at that time of day. So I'm happy to bring you along. I hope we have a chance to see some really cool things. So I'm ready for this wetland habitat.
I'm on to trail number two for today. It's called the Beaver Dams Trail. You see it's located right by the pet exercise area. And so I was greeted by deer flies and mosquitoes when I got out of the truck. <laughs> so we'll see how this trail looks. Okay, I didn't bring a map. <laughs> There's a fork. Uh, I guess I'm assuming it's a big loop. What's really cool is when you're out on these trails, you have very little chance of running into other people. I suppose unless it's the afternoon. And I think it's just because people anticipate there'll be a lot of bugs. And there have been. Um, that other trail, Swan Lake Trail. Um, first people, the only people I encountered was a mother with four of her kids. You could smell they were, they were all sprayed down with uh, bug repellent, which is good. And uh, I haven't used that, so that's why I'm using the, the bug shirt. Um, and I haven't seen anybody, including in the parking lot, which really only holds about, you know, maybe five, six vehicles. And then um, there's a bicycle rack so people can ride their bikes to these trails. There's only one that you can ride on and that's the one that we showed you yesterday. So it's just beautiful having the trail to myself. It's not that I've seen, uh, you know, uh, lots of different mammals, I haven't, but it's interesting to be able to just listen and the sounds I hear are nature. There is a highway that's not too far away from here, Highway 522. And I can hear occasional traffic when the transport trucks go by. But uh, anyway, this is a neat trail and I'm enjoying Beaver Dam Trail. So it's very buggy in here on Beaver Dam Lake Trail and it's because there's all these pockets of water. In fact I'm walking through a swamp and a swamp is a wetland that's typified by having living trees growing in in the water so they don't mind getting their roots wet unlike trees that uh, you might have in your backyard, for example. So wherever you get bodies of water, 
that are too small or temporary to have fish growing or living in them. That's where you'll have a very healthy mosquito population. Also slow moving water or stagnant water. So they do very well in swamp, marshland. As long as the marshland doesn't have a lot of fish living in it. Um, swales that are like isolated bodies of water, the kind that I've shown you with duckweed, those small uh, vascular plants, the tiniest vascular plants we have growing in it. So ideal mosquito habitat. <laughs> I can hear loons from where I'm hiking. So we're heading towards the open water. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to see some. That banjo string sound, that's the call of the green frog. Um, there's another one that is also in its breeding season called the bullfrog. They look very similar and they both breed around late June, early July. So the banjo string, green frog. Back at the site, um, that was particularly a long hike. A couple words of advice, never travel on foot without a water bottle and always carry the park map with you. So we covered two trails together, you and I. First one was to Swan Lake, but because they didn't have a map and once there is a fork in the trail, didn't know for sure which way to go because the map that we had that was in the truck is one that we used on our bike trail yesterday which was a really cool day because that's the day we got to see the bear and the loons when we went cycling. Um, then the second trail was the Beaver Dams Trail and that one was more extensive and there were some really low-lying areas so I went through that and was watching the trail markers you know eight nine and I figured I'd see a ten and I started seeing forks in the trail. Anyway, I didn't have the trail map, so I had to double back and it was really warm. And I'm really glad I had my bug gear on at the time. Now, this is who I came home to. Right? So I came in, drank three quarters of my water bottle and I uh, took the time to cool down because I <laughs> was sort of overheating. Now what I'm gonna show you is our setup for solar because here at uh, Grundy Lake Provincial Park, we got a non-electric site. So we are very excited that there's full sunshine today. So let me go through that with you. So the 12 volt battery that came with the trailer when we had them um, install solar. There's a solar panel on the roof. There's an inverter, it's a thousand watts. So that's the original. This is the battery that we added after we bought the trailer. So you can see now I've hooked it up. The two of them are connected in parallel so that one feeds the other. When one is full, the other one 
just fills from the solar panel that's always connected on the roof. And then um, Shannon is a YouTube junkie and she has rigged these containers made of those uh, milk containers so that it will carry our wood that we use under the stabilizers um, outside of the, the pass-through so it doesn't fill up that area. So that's why we have milk cartons. You won't necessarily have milk cartons on yours. So those cables that you saw with the clamps are connected to our solar panel. So I have a charge controller here. And I just ran it under this mat that is in front of our trailer. And that's a 100 watt uh, portable, um, portable solar panel that we can move around on the site as need be in order to keep the batteries charged up. Back here, we have uh, a separate uh, solar panel that we are using to charge up our Jackery. And just yesterday, I was um, uploading that bear footage and the uh, loon footage and wanted to have a chance to see what that looked like. So we ran down our Jackery, even though we got to charge it up when we went to see Shannon's brother's family, since they have hydro. Anyway, so I'll show you what this looks like and how we can tell that the Jackery is charging up just fine. Pretty good. It was 77% uh, about five minutes ago, but because we have that full on sunlight, I know it's not charging at 120 watts, which is what that panel is. But it charged at 1%, and that's just in five minutes uh, because it's taking in about 38 watts of uh, solar. It's very, very unlikely you'll get the full amount of sunlight uh, that a solar panel is, is able to use. And you'll see that we also have um, a camping light that we use. We, try to buy whatever we can that is rechargeable as opposed to using disposable batteries. So this one is rechargeable with a USB plug-in, but also it has its own solar panel on the top. So I'll show you that. So we've been using that in the trailer as well as uh, our lights, which are connected to those batteries. And so we are able to uh, just replenish on a wonderful day like today. First couple of days, I mentioned, we didn't have real great luck with solar. Uh, we unloaded and everything like that, and that day started to rain. The next day was pretty well an overcast day. Um, and then we weren't around for a couple of days because we were visiting with Shannon's uh, family. And so now, oh, this is not what I bargained for. This is Miley's take on camping. That's my chair. There's only two chairs in the whole tent, and that one is mine. But apparently it's in the sunspot, and she's um, taking it over until, I don't know, I give her other suggestions. So that's what we have going on. This is our setup. We're out on our bikes yesterday. So we keep them covered up so they're weatherproof. We lock them up. <laughs> bikes are in such strong demand this year because there's a shortage and uh, anyway that keeps us bug free when we're washing dishes and uh, doing some barbecuing and stuff 
Shannon and I might go out for a paddle this afternoon um, and soak up some rays that way, but also see what kinds of interesting wildlife we might find along the river. So we have our inflatable canoe. Uh, if we're out, that's what we're going to be using today. So if you've ever wondered what these inflatable uh, canoes are like, it actually is a really great way to be able to bring your vessel with you when you're towing a trailer and you don't have a lot of room in the back of your truck. So anyway, um, this is where we are actually going along an area that is the lesser used. We're going to be heading out to a lake or two from here. But this way we have a chance to see more still water and potentially better opportunities to see wildlife. So we'll show you what the area looks like. We're out here in the afternoon, so we know that it's a little bit busier, but uh, we expect that we'll probably have a chance to find a place that's more, uh, more filled with solitude. A lot of people have discovered the beauty of paddling through here or taking a hiking trail. Or just paddling along with me. So the great thing is we left a lot of other paddlers behind and beachgoers behind. And now we're just in an area where, you know, there's a few other paddlers around, but it's just nonstop beauty. So if you want an idea of how much room there is in these inflatable vessels, there's not a ton of room and most of the room is taken up by your inflatable sides. But the reason you want something like this is because it'll pack and you'll be able to bring this 50 pound vessel, this 50 pound duffel bag with you wherever you camp. It just fits in the back of the pickup truck or inside your trailer if that's how you travel. It'll give you a chance to see the beauty around here. Good morning. It's our second last morning here and it's beautiful this morning. I think we're expecting rain this afternoon so we'll start packing up. So I'm just out here in the view of, I'll have to get you the name of the lake, but in view of the lake that's just a couple minute walk from our campsite and just videoed a little bit of activity from a beaver where it's Beaver Lodge sits just across the way. I've shown you this view before, but here it is again. Thanks for joining me on Hiking with Kathleen. I'm so glad you got to spend the time exploring Grundy Lake Provincial Park with us. Please join us next week when we have yet another camping adventure to upload for your pleasure. In the meantime, if you like this video, please click like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much. See you next week. Bye for now.